Well, this is a lot easier now. So prayer and fasting, daily dose of God's word, day four, here we go. Just me so far. We'll see if my wife will join. She may join. There's a spot for you here, Lou, if you're tuning in live. Um, then that'd be good if you could join me. But I understand that now that we moved inside, uh, certain children have got certain requests and that is fair. You've got to look after your children and it's a good thing to do that. Um, fantastic. Whoa. But... Out of this wonderful Bible, I was so pleased because I said Isaiah 48 and I just cracked this open and perfect, right chapter, right verse. It was quite amazing. How often does that happen? You can get better at it, you know, just estimating about where it is and then sometimes you're pretty close, sometimes you nail it, like today. All right, this is in, I'm reading from the Amplified I'm sorry if it's too loud. Here we go. Verse 1 says, Cry aloud, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their transgression and to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me day and night and delight superficially to know my ways. As if they were in reality a nation that had done righteousness and has not abandoned the ordinances of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight in the nearness of God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you do not see it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you do not notice? Hear this, O Israel, on the day of your fast, you find something you desire and you force your hired servants to work instead of stopping all your work as the law teaches. The facts are that you fast only for strife and brawling and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You do not fast as you do today to make your voice heard on high. Is a fast such as this what I have chosen, a day for a man to humble himself with his sorrow in his soul? Is it only to bow down his head like a reed and to make sackcloth and ashes as a bed, pretending to have a repentant heart in the Amplified? Wow. Do you call this a fast and day pleasing to the Lord? Rather, is this not the fast which I choose to undo the bonds of wickedness, to tear down, to tear to pieces the ropes of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break apart every yoke? Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring homeless poor into the house When you see the naked, you cover him and do not hide yourself from the needs of flesh and blood. Then your light will break out like the dawn and your healing will quickly spring forth. Your righteousness will go before you, leading you to peace and prosperity. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Awesome. That's a lengthy reading to kick it off, but... You know, and we could bring a lot out of this, really. But one thing about prayer and fasting is that it's about submission to God. A lot of it is to do with submission to God. And isn't it interesting that how Adam and Eve rebellion first showed up through what they ate. They took of the fruit. They saw that it was pleasing to their eyes, heard it was desired. They they desired it. They took it. They ate it. And then they hid. And so now gaining back the dominion that was lost through Adam, ultimately it's through Christ that we gain the dominion back and he's given it back to us. And we access some of that spiritual power to have dominion again through being obedient and in submission to Christ. And Jesus said, when you fast, when you pray, when you give. So Jesus' instructions to us are that we fast. And so through doing what's necessary to submit to God's will, 
we fast. And I just think that that is very, very interesting. And this passage that I read speaks of the children of Israel saying, yet they seek me day and night and delight superficially to know my ways. And then at the end of it, they're like, why did we even fast? They say, why have we fasted and you do not see? Why have we humbled ourselves and you do not take notice? It's because they're impure hearts, not submissive hearts. Their hearts were not right. And this can happen. This can happen still. If we're fasting to try to twist God's arm, to change his mind about something that our flesh wants, then that's, that's not a good motivation. Prayer and fasting can change things, can change God's mind, perhaps. And I mean, even just saying that, that you open up just a massive theological can of worms. But you see examples through uh, God reasoning with Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham just stood there and said, you know, if there's 50 righteous, will you destroy the city? And God said, no, if there's 50 righteous, so I wouldn't destroy the city if there was 50 righteous. And it goes down for 40, 30, 20, 10. There's 10 righteous, so I won't destroy the city. And so the word had already been given that God's going to destroy the city. Thank you. Is that plain still water in a can? Yes. How bizarre. Fancy. Wow. Okay. Hopefully it tastes better. Than normal. It's a tank water, so. Beautiful rainwater. Thank you for joining us. It's fine. <laughs> Just a mild distraction. Yeah. If you're out there somewhere, let us know because it's really what a difficult to <laughs> ascertain the, um, that. Man, the yeah. Anyway, doesn't matter. Yeah. It's um the rewatch is always good too. So. True. What were you talking about? Down to how many righteous? Well, that Abraham's had such a place with God that he was a friend that God would listen to him and there was some reason. Right. Reasoning with him. Yeah. Come, let us reason together. There was there was some Yeah, it, it's it's quite a fascinating thing. I'm just talking about how Fasting can change things, but fasting, really, a big thing that it does is changes us. Yeah. And it should take the rebellion out and cause us to have a greater submission than what we had. Yeah. The, fa- the kind of fast that God chose is to loose the bonds of iniquity. What does it say? In verse... To undo the bonds of wickedness, to tear to pieces the ropes of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and break apart every yoke. It's different in the King James. Do you want me to get that? Yeah, yeah, it's right there. Oh, it's a finistake too. We can see what he says. What is it? Deuteronomy? No, no, Isaiah 58. Remember, I I got it. I know, but you said it was right there and I was on. No, no, I mean, that's New King James. The Bible is right here. I thought you meant the. um, Right. Very good. That it was open to the... Anyway, continue. Anyway, on. what I was really recapping just for Lou now. Oh, yes. I was on here. <laughs> Yet they seek me day and... They seek me day by day and delight superficially to know my ways. By prayer and fasting, we actually want to come into submission to know God's ways, not superficially. We want to know his will, his ways. We want to know him more. For real, not as a cover-up to try to anything else. Yeah. And it's so amazing how when you hang around Pentecostal circles for a while, it, it appears as though no one ever misses hearing God's voice 100% perfectly. It's, it appears. It's quite amazing, actually. Um, there's 100, particularly with life direction decisions. Oh, dear. Um, so decisions you're, having, you're that, having a go now. Decisions that are made, um, basically, they, yeah, I am having a go. Well, some Pentecostal circles you hang around, yeah, people will make decisions. No, but it, it's true how 
Could we fall into the trap yeah, it's easy. ever of saying it's the Lord? The Lord told me to do this, to do that, led me here, it's this way. It's almost like it's cultural. And then it ends in disaster. Yeah. It's, it is almost like it's cultural. Yeah, I think Pente- it is. Pentecost culture that isn't necessarily scriptural where people are like, oh, I, God said, God said, like, when it's really like I felt like even – like just today, like last night, I send a friend a message and say, hey, you should check out this um, Lego thing in Brisbane. Just, I was just thinking of you and you should check out this Lego thing. All right? We went, it was fun. Um, and then she messages me back this morning. She's like, yeah, we're on our way. How, how did you know? And it's not I'm at like, the bus stop. I'm, I'm at, at the, the train, train station, station waiting to go and way. see what you're talking about. And, I'm and like, it's not yeah. like you message her every second day. No, not at all. And I was just like, oh. I felt like I heard from God then, but often that's how it is. It's, it can be in hindsight. Yeah, it's it can often be like, wow, hindsight. that was the Lord. And you're just literally living your life in step with him. Like you're in, you know, in the word and you're in prayer and you're in relationship with God. And a lot of the time you'll just say something or you'll just be like, you know what? And it is prophetic and it is from the Lord, but you yeah. don't have to go... The Lord right. saith the Lord, because what you you just you don't need to do that because you can like of course there is a place for that. So don't hear what I'm not saying. Of course there is the prophetic gift. Of course there is a place for that. Yeah, but you but know even you one of the words on, for the prophetic um, utterance is is that it bubbles forth. Right. And it does, and sometimes it will bubble forth out of people's mouths before they have an opportunity to catch their words and to try to readjust them and that kind of thing and that can be yeah a prophetic utterance pastor ted from south australia there redemption house thank you great to have you watching Mm -mm, there you go awesome yeah like i can hear people going what do you mean the prophetic this that the other that's yeah don't hear what we're not saying but um they seek me day by day and delight superficially to know my ways. My concern sometimes is that rather than a humility to say, you know, I believe the Lord said. Right. Or I, I'm praying and fasting because I really want to know God's will. And coming into a place of heart submission. That's what I'm talking about. Heart submission. Right. Because this, they, they didn't have that in the first portion of Isaiah 58. They say, why have we fasted? You do not see it. Why have we humbled ourselves? You do not ne- take notice. And then, but God's like, that's not the fast that I've chosen to try to get to when you superficially try to know my ways. Right. Like it has to be genuine heart submission. And to try to get, you know, deception is the only problem with deception is it's deceiving. <laughs> Ten wrote verily, verily. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's in agreement. <laughs> Deception's deceiving. And we've got to come out of the place of rebellion and come into the place of submission. And I believe that prayer and fasting does that. Prayer and fasting does that. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he wrestled. Jacob wrestled with God. Like there's there's a wrestling with his will, and to man, Adam, they they rebelled through eating. Yeah. We submit through not eating. We submit through not eating and come into alignment and to a place of greater heart submission. And my concern with sometimes when people say, "Yeah, we know the Lord told us to do this, to do this, and let us here, let us there," and and it all ended in disaster many times or no fruit and. You know, but, oh, I don't know what God's up to. He's up to something. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Um, you're kind of throwing God under the bus, but making yourself look perfect by, you, you would never miss here. No, but, but God, God, God obviously would, missed it, obviously. But doesn't he, isn't he a good shepherd? Yeah. Doesn't he lead you to the still waters and green pastures yeah. and restore your soul? Sometimes Fill your it's, cup to the overflow? Yeah. Sometimes it's good? when the rubber meets the road. It's like, oh, God called us somewhere else. But it was actually, things got a bit hard and I should have stuck at it sometimes. You yes, know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, there I is, there the are Lord... times I should not have left. Yeah. And I did leave. Yeah. And looking I am... back, you see it and you're like, oh, missed it. Was it was grieving. It. Not... When I saw it, 
properly, it yeah. was grieving to me. Rather than... And there was genuine heart repentance. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about, yeah, leaving leaving a, ch- a particular church. And it wasn't it wasn't the last two churches. It was um, a long time ago. It, it was quite a while ago. Pre-kids, so but... Just in um, case people are watching, trying to work out. Oh, oh really? Oh, which one? Oh, they missed it. Oh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but maybe, do you know what? Maybe we should share along those kind of lines more just to... Yeah, well, it's like a catch cry. It's another thing that's culturally, like I'm talking about being culturally accepted in Pentecostal churches is like, oh, well, the Lord led me here and then the Lord led me this way and Lord led me, Lord, Lord, Lord. He's not schizophrenic. No, he's not like, I've caught, he says like you should be planted. He doesn't say, you know, what's the worst thing you can do for a plant? Uproot it every five minutes, uproot it every year. And oh, well, the Lord called us to this church and the Lord called us to that church. Probably actually stuff started to get hard or something happened and there was an offense to work through and you didn't do that or, yeah. um, you know, th- it's true. the Lord will take you through a process sometimes and to just, you know, a lot of the time I feel like it can be one of those things that people just use because it helps you feel better. Yeah. Um, we feel the Lord moving us here when sometimes it can be... And we don't have anyone in go. mind when we're saying this. We have us in mind. We have uh, actually we have we do. that in mind. When you know, we did leave like Yeah, we have us in mind. So before we were even... Before you messaged me. Any, any, yeah, that's right. <laughs> because um, the truth is most people should be primarily concerned with God's will for their own life rather than being idle yeah. and trying to work out other people's lives and what the direction is for others. Um, you can turn to Psalm 92. Okay. You know, I, I know of an organization that had a very established bottle tree uh, on their property and they were not able to remove it. Um, they, the council regulations, because it was a, a good size and a, a notable tree, what was it? What do they call it? A um, notable. Is yeah, it was a uh, historic. No, there's a certain word. The council can deem a tree to be a significant tree. It gets deemed worthy. Yeah, yeah, I'm and it can be sure any it's tree. Worthy. It is like I don't know what the categorization is, but um, anyway, this was probably deemed to be a significant bottle tree. I think that's the word. And significant. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. I got it eventually. <laughs> Anyway, they had to move it from one location and they moved it up on the hill and then would have spent thousands of dollars transplanting that thing. And then they realized, oh, actually, we shouldn't have moved it there because we're going to do this. And then they moved it again to another location. And then they spent thousands of dollars again. No. Yes, yes. I'm I'm. Three Nine, times? Three times. It was there, Did it then it was die? up there, then it was near the front, and then it was in the middle of the roundabout of a certain place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Place. I know what you're talking about. But Not to throw an organization. Die? It died. Yeah, of course it did. You can't rip it, it up. It was established. They did. They And the groundsmen of that organization are phenomenal. Can I just say? Oh, yeah. It they been, are And they spent thousands excellent. of dollars trying they to do it. They really... It, the soil is fantastic. The, the water, they've got access to bore water, rainwater, the best fertilizers, the best equipment. And I mean, like some of the best equipment that you can get. So they were not lightweights in landscaping. Yeah. They killed. Yeah, you can't. That's like the worst thing <laughs> for a tree. plant. Rip it up, put it somewhere else. And what else too? Like a transplant in a human body. When you plant like a new organ into a body, like a person rip them rip it out of another body and put it into another person's body that body rejects it you have to take so all this medication and the rest of it to that have, lowers your immune yeah, system so that your body won't reject this new member, member to um to Rem- the body yeah. and it's actually quite phenomenal if you think about it like the we're lord members plants of his you body in a church and then like you rip yourself out when it's not the lord Ah, it's not going to go well. And then you go into another body and you get eaten alive. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's an interesting concept. Have it's you ever really been at church one for, going um, like, who are these people that are They don't belong here. This is our broadcaster. Like, oh, you know, we're not into maybe like, they don't. church snatching. <laughs> 
<laughs> when I'm just snatching members from other churches, if you're planted in the house of the Lord and you know you're supposed to be there, stay there. Yes. Um, and, you, and you know what? You should flourish. Yeah, that's right. That's you what the should word actually says. flourish. Go read planted, it, Lou. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord. Where is it? Is it am I right here? Yeah, 92. Okay, here we go. So the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, be long-lived, stately, upright, useful. This is the Amplified and fruitful. They shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon, stable, durable, incorrupted. Planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of God. Do you want me to keep going? But that's the part like that we're emphasizing is planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish. Um, Absolutely. Growing in grace, they shall shall bring fruit. Fourth, in old age, they shall be full of sap, of spiritual vitality, and rich in the verdure of trust, love, and contentment. Yeah, awesome. That's right. Yeah. Fla- oh, flourishing. yes. Flourishing. When you are planted, you flourish. Yes. Like, you bear fruit. There's so much. When you're, when you're planted somewhere, like, you can't just keep uprooting yourself. That's true. Um, and it's like true. there, it's of not, course, it's not, there are, make a healthy tree. that's right. There are situations where the Lord, like if you're somewhere studying and training to, you know, of course, like the Lord will pull you probably from that college or something to do a work somewhere. But, you know, I would, I would pretty well probably say that if, if there's a change in leadership, it's yeah, like it's you've already, changed churches. The church in changed you. and you didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> so if you <laughs> like leave, it's, it's that, fine. It's that much of a change. And but like people people do come and go and life circumstances happen and that's fine. But like yeah, And sometimes know, it is on the, on the Lord. But that's right. But we cannot be kidding ourselves. That's, that's what we're talking yeah, about is that we, we cannot be superficially to know his ways. Or pretending that we know his ways yeah. when we're not, when we feel as though this is right and we're moving towards it, then that's fine. But just walk humbly before your God. Yeah. Walk humbly in, in the direction and the decisions and, and move slowly with the big, um, till big you know decisions. it's right. And that's then right. When, when you know it's right and you're being obedient, then, yeah, then go, go for it. Like, that's right. And you'll go with Move quickly with, with obedience when you know it's him. That's right. But if you're if you're still finding your way, then don't don't pretend to superficially know That's his ways. That's the thing that we're really trying to hit is don't like spiritualize something and be like, oh, the Lord said, the Lord said, when it's not necessarily, when it's just like, oh, I want to. Because you throw him under the bus, you yeah. make yourself look good. That's right. The it's Lord, ugly. Oh, the it's Lord pride. took us through this, and the Lord took us through that. You're like, really? I'm pretty sure that was you. Yeah. But. God is so good. He will use all of it. He loves you so much. Absolutely. He's a good shepherd. That's and right. we want to, you know, this is something that we're doing, praying and fasting, that we'll come into greater levels of submission to him. I've got my entire part. I don't like this part. There's going to be a lot more voices right now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well. All right, girls, let's pray for everybody, okay? Come pray. Come here. For the church, okay. for prayer and fasting. Come in, Adonica, everybody. Yeah, they're all here. Yeah. Come Father, on. thank you that everyone that is planted in the house of the Lord is flourishing. We pray that during this time of prayer and fasting that greater levels of submission to your spirit come to us, Lord, that we, we would be able to put the flesh under. And just like Adam rebelled against you by taking the fruit and eating. We want to submit to you by pushing the plate away. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that we have to pray and fast as a church. We pray everyone watching, that everyone that is joining in from Breakthrough Center never be the same after this. Be refreshed in Jesus' mighty name. Did you you want to say amen, Jessica? You want to say goodbye to the people? Oh, just a little she's interruption. Me a right yeah. Look. Daddy, mommy. Yeah, that's okay. okay. So we're going now. Goodbye, so wave, wave goodbye. Wait, wait, you want to wave, wave goodbye, wave. Donica? No, oh, here comes Evelyn. Hang on, she got a wave too. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Love you all. Bye. If you'd like to give, give um, on. 
the website. We'll put a link to the website. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you Sunday at 10 a.m. at 15 Blake Street, Wilsonton. If you're anywhere in the Lockyer Valley, come and visit us. It's a family church. So these ones, you know, they make some noise and that's okay. We're yes. comfortable with that, you know. Jesus said, that, let the little ones come to me. So <laughs> Breakthrough Center, Family Church. We're working on, on an incredible playground and that's a work in progress. Kids Church, not on this week. Time to go. It'll start next week. Love you all. See you.